Can I go to a movie with Riley tonight? With Riley? Your grandparents are coming for dinner tonight, remember? Awesome. Grandpa telling his disgusting Vietnam stories. Take my advice, don't ever have kids. Mom and Dad is a 2017 horror comedy starring Nick Cage and Selma Blair. It was directed by Brian Taylor, and if that name rings any bells, it's because he also co-directed the Crank movies. So if you've seen the Crank movies, you know what you're getting into, at least with his directing style. Now, I've seen a lot of people talk about Mom and Dad on YouTube, and it's mainly negative things. But I think this movie is kind of low-key genius. It is genuinely one of my favorite movies of all time, and it's, I'm actually being serious. <laughs> If I'm in a sad mood, I watch this to get happy. I mean, it's hilarious. Come on now. So in order to try to clear its name of all the negative reviews you might be seeing, I'm going to try to pitch it. Honestly, they should probably hire me for the PR team. Okay, so imagine the energy of Crank. The most absurd Nick Cage performance you'll ever see. The weirdest EDM type score you'll ever hear. But also a personal film about a midlife crisis but instead of getting all dramatic, they try to kill their kids. <laughs> it sounds insane, right? Never have kids. Everything just revolves around you, doesn't it? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Enough for like a film runtime. So like, might as well just put that bitch on, right? But I want to get into the meat and bones of this story here. I, I, I said in the beginning, this film was genius. That might be a little, <laughs> little exaggeration, but I'm going to tell you why I think so. Like, what makes this movie special? To me, anyways. And a lot of other people don't see it as such, but I do. People have advertised this movie as one of those bad, it's so bad it's good type of movies. Which is wrong, because it's not bad at all. It does that on purpose. It's a stylistic choice. But uh, they, they compare it to movies like The Room... Or like, you know, those, the horror movie Wish Upon, which everyone laughed at. But I disagree. I think this movie knows exactly what it's doing. I think that's kind of the point of it. It goes for the absurd. It's not trying to be realistic <laughs> in, in any sense of the word. The plot is... Everything about it is absurd. They literally have Nicolas Cage, you know? And we all know about Nicolas Cage's financial situation. He's broke, so he says yes to every movie he can. But I think this one, they knew that, and they used it to its, to their advantage, not just as, like, a box office draw. They actually used him because the way he is. <laughs> but anyways, mainly we see movies deal with the personal kind of family and marriage struggles in, like, a dramatic, you know, sensible way. You know, kind of those boring dramas. Not, like, boring dramas, but, like, you know, those dramas, those family dramas that, you know, get nominated for 10 Oscars each, like Boyhood. You know, things like American Beauty. Nothing wrong with those movies or anything, I'm just saying. And Mom and Dad, here's the thing about Mom and Dad. Uh, the director wanted to explore those same themes, but in a horror movie. <laughs> and it's super creative. I give them 100% props for taking one of those formulaic things of like a divorce or, or family squabbles or things like that and turning it on in the head and having these two loving parents turn on their kids, literally. So, I don't know, I, I think it's kind of smart. It weirdly reminds me of a Black Mirror episode, just because the way it is, kind of like, oh, you have to kill your, you know, you know what I mean? Anyways, I don't know. It actually explores its themes in pretty great detail. Uh, the themes are like, you know, becoming old, peaking in life too early, uh, missing your 20s, you know, things like that. Temptation, I, th I saw in there a lot. Uh, loyalty in a long-term relationship, and weirdly... Weirdly, it understands that talking things out in a relationship can actually help. That's something that it says, insanely. It actually shows this in a weirdly smart way, and with not... It shows it instead of, like, you know, telling you, like, oh, blah, 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 we need to talk it out, blah, 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 blah. It, like, shows it, like, through the movie. It's really good, actually. So, like, at the beginning, uh, the parents are seen in, like, the same room. They're, like making breakfast together or some shit they're like together for like one scene now this movie's really short so that one scene is not a lot but they're not really seen interacting or talking to each other very much throughout they're kind of he's at his job sleeping she's with her friend doing her thing and at her job so 
it just starts off with like five minute scene of them talking. So you understand that they are together. <laughs> but the next 45 minutes, he, they, they don't even talk to each other. He ignores her calls. Nothing gets said or done between them. They, they seem like they're already distant enough to be divorced. Like I said, he was dreaming about a beautiful woman when he was napping at his desk. And she was staring at her hot yoga teacher. Like, like come on. They're all, like, they're clearly not going to last at this point. And that's what the movie tells you. Not by telling you, like, hey, look, you know, through this, through, like, explanatory dialogue and stuff. No, 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 no. They show you (laughs) by characters' actions and and demeanors and stuff like that. And weirdly, the scenes also add dia- or not dia- comedy to the movie. This is uh, advertised as a horror comedy. So there are some comedic scenes, especially with the yoga. I think that scene's kind of funny with Summer Blair. But then shit goes down, obviously. And there's a signal sent out by whatever. You don't really know any details about it. You just know parents all of a sudden are trying to kill their kids. Which is done in a pretty great way, actually, the way they explore that. It's pretty chaotic at the school, and then shit keeps happening, and then shit keeps escalating and happening and happening. I really like that scene, actually. It's pretty dark. But anyway, sidetrack. When this happens, uh, Mr. Cage and Miss Selma Blair actually start working together (laughs) to kill their kids and actually start talking to each other, which is new for them because they clearly don't do it very often unless they're in an argument or something. It's at this point when their relationship is really shown, and it's not originally what we thought. We kind of thought their marriage was in the dumps. Uh, They really did care for each other in the past. They clearly do have a strong relationship built. Uh, But so many things happened. They're both going through personal struggles, like Nick Cage is going through a struggle of his midlife crisis. And she's going through family squabbles. She's, um, like, dealing with her daughter stealing her money and her son being weird (laughs) you know so they're both going through things and they they start talking about it and it actually helps them and then they slowly realize all the things that they're mad about or all their problems come from their kids so like nick cage's sex drive he can't have sex as much because his wife just had kids so that's his problem and her problem is literally the kids stealing money and being like just general assholes all the time so this fuels their rage even more, and they want to kill their kids even more. So now they work together, they start planning, they start doing all this shit, and they try to gas them out this time. They bond over the experience of gassing their kids, and for the first time all movie, they act like a couple, even reflecting on past times in their marriage. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, come on. It's funny because, like, you know, the thing is, the old saying, I guess, it's not really a saying, but the old idea is, kids bring a couple together like nothing else and ironically the kids had separated them like nothing else but when they want to kill their kids it brings them together like nothing else again it's a good way to flip like the normal relationship like themes and plots like that on its head completely it also goes against the main thing where when parents get a divorce they tell the kids like a billion trillion times oh it's not your fault it's not your fault we just didn't work out it's not your fault Blah, 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 you know? This one says the exact opposite. It's telling your kids it's exactly your fault. (laughs) You did this to us, and now we're going to kill you for it. Like, what what, what kind of film would say that? What a horrible message. But it's it's a brutal truth message, I think, is the point. It personally attacks a sacred thing in in most households, which is the kids. Now the kids end up surviving and outsmarting the parents. Uh, traumatized, I'm I'm sure. And ironically, it only makes sense that the kids tie their parents together for a long time, representing the idea that the parents will stay together for the kids until college. I mean, come on. (laughs) That's, you know, that's kind of symbolic, right? Give this movie some credit, people. All of this commentary on relationships and family households uh, in an insane action horror movie with Nick Cage, you know doesn't sound like it should work but it works very well it's super entertaining this movie is batshit crazy again i'm gonna warn you don't go into this thinking it's some like you know relationship commentary only no this movie's fucking insane and it's hilarious at times and it's it's insane (laughs) this is one of the most crazy action-packed weird movies i've ever seen but if you're a true film buff or film analysis type person 
I think you can see that there's some layers to this, and it was clearly done with love and passion by the director. I think he really did care about this script anyways. And trust me, there is more to it than just this one relationship between uh, Selma Blair and Nick Cage. Like, the kids, they have some <clears throat> pretty universal themes as well. But I think for this video, my point has been made. <laughs> um, go watch this film, though. Yeah, I believe it's on Hulu. Uh, watch it with friends. It's funny and ridiculous. The score is insane. The, the blah noises are fucking insane. It's not even... It's ridiculous, this movie. It has Nick Cage. It has everything you really need. Just please go watch it. It's funny. Anyways, thanks for watching.